<laughs> well, that's great. So, so what we're here to talk to talk about today, I'm going to get to this quickly, okay? Because web portals, I'm fine. I mean, web portals, if you want to move around here, I'm not going to sit. I'll just look at that. Okay. <laughs> we title it web portals as a competitive differentiator because a lot of times this is kind of the genesis of one of the main business cases to put data online. And normally, the person on the other side of that screen is a customer, right? Now, it could be field employees. We could be talking internally. If we're talking about managing internal documents, more like an intranet collaboration facility. But normally, with an office service company, what we're talking about is a web portal that allows your customer to look at data and examine data that you might expose. And we're going to talk about specifically how how web portals can be uh, can become a competitive differentiator. And we'll talk about some of our different clients' experiences in that. Just a brief single slide about the company. Um, we're, the name of the company is Entrance. We're software consultants for the oil and gas industry. We uh, have been in business for 10 years. Um, we believe that the information you already have in your business has is the next big potential for extracting value from the company. In other words, we're not here to create more data or sell product. We're here to help you take the data you already are creating in your business and get more value for it, either for yourself internally or for your customer, as we'll talk about today. We think that that's the information as an asset. A lot of companies treat their trucks and their equipment as assets, and they maintain and they take care of and they steward those assets, the physical assets of the company, but they don't think about the information assets of the company. And what we do is work with companies to steward and get more value and maintain those information assets. Um, what we say about the company is sort of our tagline is that we're fluent in energy. So yes, we're software consultants, yes, we interface with IT, but when we go to work with a, a business that works anywhere in the oil and gas space, you don't have to teach us what a well is, what a tubular is, etc. We come in with that knowledge, and so we're here and we bring the experience also working inside the industry uh, to be able to share projects and, and uh, best practices that we're seeing at a lot of times your, your peer firms. Uh, we're a Microsoft partner, and we're kind of the nexus of the business, knowing the line of business, knowing the application of the technology, and also what underlying technologies need to be doing in order to enable those, those business scenarios. Uh, so the goals today, some of the questions that we had on our survey, you know, what do we mean by portals? From our survey, it sort of determined uh, that there's a lot of different ideas of like, what is a portal, what can they do? Is that, is that one thing? Is it a family of things? And then, what do they really do? Can they help drive sales? So how would having a web capability actually drive revenue for the business? Uh, can they help retain customers? So this idea of stickiness of customer, why would a customer keep doing business with you versus maybe look across the street? And then, how can they help differentiate your business? So if you're offering the same, at the end of the day, it's the same boots and the same hard hats out there doing the same job, how can I, what's the value add that I can bring to the customer? And can technology help me innovate on top of the normal standard operating procedure out there in the oil field? So the agenda today, we're going to talk about what is a portal, we're going to talk about the business drivers behind doing portals, how you start the planning process if you want it. If this is something that, that looks like an interesting initiative, where do you start? Where does it all begin? Give you some real steps you can do. Just recap the takeaways from lunch today, and then we're just going to open up for lunch. Meals will be here, and we'll go around. And uh, uh, we were just saying before you two gentlemen join us that uh, a lot of the lunch and learners that we do, the discussion afterwards is really oftentimes even more valuable than the presentation itself, just as proud as we are of our, of our three slides. Okay. So first off, underline, what's the backdrop here? It's data proliferation. Everywhere, and especially in the oil and gas industry, we are producing exponentially more data every year. Everything that we track as we digitize our fields, as, as a lot of y'all's clients buy Merit's products, right, and, and take those Excel and paper forms into digital, into a database, that data set is growing every year, every year. Uh, Google Chairman Eric Schmidt said 90% of the world's data was created in the past two years. That tells you it's doubling every two years, right? And that's a, that hockey stick is continuing, and yet we don't have we haven't doubled the population. So how do we consume as as people more and more data? Okay, and then a McKinsey report recently pointed out that almost 20% of our day, 
25% of our day is wasted looking for information, not processing it or analyzing it or making decisions, but trying to find the source data that I need to actually make the decision. And what we'd like to say is that if you can, that with a good, good piece of software, software is effectively the gap between the people and the information you need to make a decision. And so when you when you can't app, when you can't locate that data, that's a sign of, of an in, inappropriate tool. We don't have the right software tools to access the information you need to make those decisions. So this is kind of our data backdrop. Now let's get into what is a portal. So a portal, primarily, the most basic idea of what a portal is, is just a central location for information. So you have lots of different types of information. You want to bring it all together in one place. That's really what a portal is. The word portal is really about a, a gateway. It's a, it's, a, it's a jumping off point. It's where I would start my, my look for information so that I could arrive at something that's decisionable. Go ahead. You're here for the uh, portals, yeah. learn? Okay, come on in. We save okay, your chair. <laughs> yeah, great, no problem. Um, we'll make sure that the uh, waiter comes in and that gets started for you. Uh, so, a portal is a central location for this information, and it aggregates across usually multiple different types of data, multiple different data sets. Ease of access. The other thing that we think about when we think about a portal is that it's somehow easier to, to interact with that information than it would be in the native location. So if it's taking data from a spreadsheet or from some other database, from an access database that you guys mentioned that you're using, the idea is that this makes it easier for whoever the target audience is, maybe it's a customer, right? Easier for them to interface with, and we can filter and only show them what's relevant to their decision-making process. Control some of that security, for example, talking about you know, engineers maybe not needing to see all of the inventory data, uh, for example. Uh, and and there, I put remote availability here, but the idea is typically they're online, right? So this isn't something that is just running inside your company, uh, but they're available from wherever. So the idea is that I can go to this portal wherever, whenever, from whatever device I need. Uh, that was also mentioned is this idea of all these different devices. We can't just have a website anymore. We've got to have a, one that works on the iPhone, one that works on the iPad, one that's touch enabled, right? And so the portal idea is to bring this data in together into a simple place. Uh, what they're used for is to make enable self-service of information. So rather than a customer calling saying, hey, where are we at on that PO? Now, maybe rather than is too strong a term, but um, where are we at on our PO? Where are we at on that AFB? The idea is that the customer can self-service that information. Instead of them having to call every day, every week, to find out where they are on their budget, where are we on our progress, where are we at with that project, where's that piece of equipment, how far is it from the job site, right? How many of those did we rent from you guys? Did we sign up for that service yet? Where are we on our contract, right? All these types of questions that a customer might be asking it allows them to self-service into, uh, into that data set through a, an easy to use interface. Okay. Um, so what are some things that external, the external facing portal might be able to do? One would be uh, allow customers to review and approve tickets. So a ticket is a, a what is now typically a paper representation of some field service, some delivery of goods, etc. that's taken place in the physical world. And the idea is if you have a digital ticketing system, you're able to have customers review and approve those online through your portal. That might be one capability. Another thing is invoicing. Um, customers that pay invoices, we have uh, integrated our, some of our clients' portals directly with some of their customer portals so that they direct through bill. And we're, and we're going to talk about some of the benefits, but one of the key things is DSO, reducing DSO for the company, day sales outstanding, right? That's a cash flow, direct cash flow driver, direct value creation. Uh, you think about you know, what's, your, what's your float, your interest rate on that, on that money while you're waiting to get paid. Every day you move that up, that DSO number down, that's cash in the bank or cash for operations, right? Internal portals, we're not going to talk as much about that today, but clearly, uh, as you mentioned, there's documents internally, people are collaborating on them. And sometimes what you'll find is that there's one portal that has an external face and an internal face, but it's really the same set of content being presented different ways. So maybe engineers are producing reports, they're uploading them into the internal portal, and then the external portal sort of filters that so that when a customer logs in, they only see the content that's relevant to them. Any questions about the self-service aspect of, of information? Okay, great, keep moving. 
So what are some of the business drivers? We mentioned briefly DSL as a cash flow driver. Um, also scale, you think about as you service more and more customers, as you process more and more invoices, more and more tickets, more and more equipment, more and more services being delivered in the field, what does the back office have to scale to support that, that, that growing operation? Right? And so if you allow the self-servicing of information and you're able to accelerate that time to get to the decision part, as opposed to the looking for the information that I need part, you can, you can scale the business without having to necessarily grow the overhead uh, as a necessary consequence of the scale of the operations of the business. Second of all, competitive advantage. Um, today, customers expect to get data. Now, the question is, how do you deliver them that information? Is it in a snail mail packet of 300 pages at the end of the job that comes through FedEx? Is that how you're delivering information to the customer? Or is it as the job rolls out, cost, time, activity data is available to them in real time, semi real time, uh, maybe even filtered, but uh, statusing is done where they can pull down that information on demand, maybe even incorporate it into their own systems. You make it available even programmatically to customers through a direct company to company integration or maybe even through uh, a central sort of uh, invoice processing system so lots of ecosystems that help service companies get paid by oil companies. Um, so the ability to com be compatible and share this information with customers digitally, you may present the same service but if yours comes with the transparency of information, meaning we're going to do the same job for you, but you're going to know where we're at on our project without having to make a phone call or trust the project manager. The information that we have, you have. Uh, and that is a pitch that our clients make to their customers and say, look, when a ticket gets processed, as soon as we have it, you have it. You can run the same reports. You have the same reports that our project managers have, your project managers have. And so that level of transparency and accountability uh, is a selling point. So that's differentiation. We also see uh, the portals get used during the pitch process. So if you're going to, to pitch a large deal, um, people actually bring their screenshots of their portals, how other customers have used this, help the customer envision themselves interacting with this information and what would their life as a project manager be if they were interfacing with your company during this project as opposed to someone else's where they were phone calls and paper. Right? Very different type of experience. So we see clients using this as a, as a key point as they talk to executives and talk to stakeholders for their customers as a sales tool. And last, retain customers. Over time, you start to aggregate all this information about the job history of a particular customer. You can not only provide the data about the job, uh, but also provide trend data. The average number of days it takes to perform this service across all the 35 jobs we've done for you in the last 18 months is X, right? That's a value add over and above the just the, just the capture, the charge capture type information. Um, but if you're uh, selling equipment or you're delivering field services, you're able to sort of trend and average that time expense type information. Uh, you build up this database of history that you're able to provide as long as you keep doing business with us, we keep this project data, we keep this archive available for you. We even have some clients that charge their customers to keep the archive of the project history after the job is done and create secondary revenue streams where the customer says, look, we don't have a place for that information. Uh, we want you to remember like this piece of equipment, like where did it go, how long did it sit in this warehouse, uh, what, uh, what types of activities were performed on this equipment, and what did we pay for? And we want to track that because uh, we don't have a place to keep that. So some of them will say, you don't have to pay. We're not asking to get paid for that. But if you want us to keep it around for you and make it available for five years after any job terminates, we can do that as, as part of the job work. Again, you can go and say, well, that's not an extra revenue stream. We're just going to call that differentiation. We're going to talk about value add to the relationship. Any other questions about kind of some of these business drivers and why you would go and create something like this? Okay, great. Here's a quote from one of our clients. This is actually from this week. Was so, I, we had a different quote in here, but I changed it because this was so good. Uh, uh, we were meeting with the president of a half a billion revenue, doubling every 18 months, uh, growth, high growth oil field services client of ours. And the president said, look, mate, 10% of our sell to our customers at Portal. 
we were talking about how critical, you know, as they continue to grow, putting in scalability and things like that. It is our transparency and our accountability to them. It has to be up, it has to be fast. So this, this nice to have project that they dreamed up a couple of years ago, um, now has become a critical element in how they sell and how they win business. Uh, and I actually have a, a friend of mine uh, who is a project manager at El Paso, and uh, well, now can Morgan, of course. Um, and uh, he said they push that portal hard when they come to pitch deals because nobody else has it. Everybody else wants it. And it's hard to go and create this. Like you said, if you don't, if you don't have the database of stuff behind it, you, what can you go put online, right? So, we, so let's talk about how do you how do you go out, how do you go and, and put this together? All right. So first off, you got to know what your goals are. Like, what are you trying to accomplish through this system, right? Are you trying to differentiate? Are you trying to create a loyalty if, uh, to the customer? You know, some killer feature, not even necessarily one that costs a lot of money, but one that's like, man, it's so convenient. I just can't give that up. The other guy's five percent less than you on this bid, but man, I'd have to not. I'd have to deal with the headache and go back to the old way. I feel like I'm taking a step back in, in productivity. I feel like I'm taking more risk. You're worth it, right? Uh, are you trying to generate premium pricing? Are you trying to differentiate? But what are the goals that you want to get? Are you just trying to disseminate information? Maybe it's putting your safety record out there in front of the customer. Here you go. An accident? We have an accident you don't know about. It. We're on the hook for that. We're good. We're good to put that in front of you. Uh, that's how confident we are in our safety record. So there's all different types of things that you might say are your goals. The next piece to, to ask about is what are your customers looking to find out. What do they want from you? What are they when they call your sales managers, your account managers, your project managers, right? And they ask a question, what is it that they're asking about? What are the questions that they're not asking you that they're wondering, do these guys even know this stuff? Maybe they don't even think you know. Right? But you may have this, this information. So what is it that the customer is looking for? And then how how what's the best format that we can provide that to the customer? Is it a download into Excel? You know no software company likes to build stuff into Excel, but in terms of consumption, you know, anybody can consume data that's in Excel. So you think about how would the customer ideally receive that information, and then how do we get that data into some sort of web-enabled presence, which is our portal. Right? So where is the data in our company, and what are, the, what are the systems that would have that data today? And the systems could be a spreadsheet. Right? You could be cracking that data in a spreadsheet, or an access database, or an ERP system. Right? Where is that data in the house, and how do we take that to a customer? So we talked about um, the goals. Here's some ideas of how you might set the goal. Ideally, uh, what we try to work with customers on before you go and fund a project with some arbitrary budget, right? I have a magic number behind my hand. You know, we're going to go get some proposals, and if they're less than the magic number, then we'll take a look at it. Because what are we trying to accomplish? I and mean, let's resource it accordingly. Okay, we're trying to increase. You know, we're trying to retain. You know, today we retain 80% of our customers. We'd like to retain 85% of our customers. So what would that mean? And then what's what would make that worth it? Right? What type of investment would make that worth it? And that's something you can measure. We want to develop our brand as an innovator. It doesn't always have to be a hard goal, right? We want to be known as someone who innovates technologically. We want our products to be thought of that way, we want our people to be thought of that way, and we need to be able to fulfill that vision, and part of that means we need to be on the front line of providing information to the customer. Drive share of wallet increase. When someone's in the portal, they hire us for one service, we provide four. We want that in front of them. They're coming in looking at the results of this one service, we want to put some information out there about the other four services that we provide that they don't know about, that they're not using this for. We just acquired another line of business we're trying to market that out there. This is another point of connection between you and your customer. Not to replace the sales manager. That human element is never going to go away. This is about augmenting. This is about I don't have to have a sales manager carry a briefcase full of documents so I can look up a piece of information. I can always just know. Well, let's log into your portal and let's see. Right? It becomes a tool for the sales manager. Um, and envisioning what is the portal experience that aligns with these goals. So if your goal is to create sort of a brand experience for the customer, how do you bring your brand into how you show this portal to the customer? Uh, this is anything from styling, so a lot, a lot of times we'll pull in the marketing folks from the company and incorporate them into the process of building this. 
Um, and a lot of times the executives who say, look, this is this is the message. This is our message for 2014, mate. We need this. We need to deliver these set of capabilities. And uh, we've told, we've gone on to market. We said this is the type of company we're going to be. And uh, we need we need a suite of capabilities to back that up. So, is it a sales tool, a loyalty tool? Um, is it an operations tool? Uh, how real time does the data need to be? Right. The more that is, the higher the cost. Right. The more sophisticated the technology has to be to deliver that real time data, not just on the web presence, but all the way back to where you're capturing the information. So, thinking about how real time is it? Does the customer really need? Like last, five minutes ago, as of five minutes ago, <coughs> as of five minutes ago, does the customer need that sort of granularity, or is it really as of the last 24 hours would be fine? Um, and then how detailed? We want to show them summary information, or we want them to drill down to the depths of the ocean, down to the source document. Next, you want to know, okay, so we, now we've, we've established our goals, we put some little fire print on the goals, and now we want to say, what does the customer really want to know? So, for example, uh, if you have a, if you have information about hours that got worked, right? How could this data be useful to the customer in their perspective, not necessarily our perspective as the provider? But what is what is the customer thinking about this? Do they care about hours, or do they just care about that what what got accomplished? Maybe they don't care about hours, right? Maybe they just care about milestones. So, thinking about what is it that the customer cares about that we know about that we can put out there for them. Um, forecasted completion dates, you know, we're on target to hit this date, right? That sort of thing, if that slips, maybe we shoot them an alert. Send them an email automatically, hey, we slipped, we slipped the date. Maybe we don't. Maybe we slip their sales manager an alert. Say, hey, you need to make a phone call and go, go deal with this issue. Um, so there's all sorts of ways that you can use uh, downtime, repair costs, progress versus budget, uh, you know that's a that's a no brainer. There's not any, I don't have any customers that don't want to know progress versus budget. You know, um, if you've got an AFE to provide a service and you're gonna you're gonna need an additional PO against that that you didn't plan for, that's something that might you might want to be tracking. Or well, where are you? You know, on that AFP. <clears throat> um, so how so now the, the last question is how do you get the data into the portal? So. You want to identify the sources of this valuable information. So we just addressed what is valuable information to the target user, who's our customer. And then where do we keep this stuff? Is it a spreadsheet? Is it printed on my desk? Is it written in the check-in book that's under the driver's seat of the truck? Where is this piece of information that this customer's going to want to know about? Um, and how do we bring that from where it is to the online world? And it doesn't have to be super fancy automated. It certainly can be, right? But we want to think about um, how do we do that? Is this information, do we even have good quality information for this question that the customer asks us? Or is it always a fire drill every time we get this phone call? Uh, one of our clients, Smith Services, uh, specifically their Rhino Reamer, Reamers division, had this issue where uh, as long as everything went well with their jobs, uh, they really didn't need a whole lot of technology to, to answer customer questions. They really managed that in the marketing and sales farm. But when something went wrong, and they do, uh, nobody's perfect, um, it was a real scramble. It was shut down the entire department, we have to answer this question, no one knows what's going on, storm of phone calls, meetings, etc. They weren't prepared to say, oh, well, here's what's going on, here's where the backup equipment is, it's coming to you. Blah blah blah. Right. So this warehouse is on this truck. Here's here's where it is. We've got three more that are in spec that are already ready to go. Right. They didn't know. They didn't have access to inventory. They didn't have access to warehouse. They didn't have access to logistics uh, as the as the customer facing human self set of the business. And so we work with them to build a portal that they use both internally and externally to provide this information that ties into these other back back end systems that they had built in house. Um, so availability, any security concerns you mentioned, you know, not every user needs to see every piece of information. So that's something you want to think about as you start stuffing stuff and putting it online and say, okay, well, this is online. Let's make sure that we're that we're that we're uh, paying attention to the security of this information uh, and who has access to it and how we control that access. How do we turn it on? How do we turn it off? Uh, once we're done doing business with a customer. Um, what needs to be integrated bef 
core, you bring these things that connect them up to the portal. So sometimes, you know, uh, you might have um, AFE number in your ERP system and your operation system and this other one. They're not connected. So if it changes over here, it doesn't always get changed over here. And that might be an issue. You start putting that in front of the customer and they see numbers that don't line up. Right? You may create more headaches than you solve. So you need to make sure that you're going to have a good set of quality information. Sometimes that means that if you've got multiple places for it, you want to be sure that you're wiring up to the right ones. And then lastly, of course, you've got to establish the connection of this information <laughs> to your portal. So I want to just give you a little bit. We talk a lot like at a high level about what these portals are. I want to show you one. This is Spread Boss. It's a product uh, for one of our clients, DG Mercer. This is uh, these are they, they've authorized us to show these, and they were they've been in. Um, Oil and Gas Pipeline Journal, in fact, an article about this, this particular portal. But um, this is just one element of their in application infrastructure. But they have, uh, they're a, a pipeline logistics and increasingly an equipment logistics provider to uh, not only the midstream, but increasingly the suppliers to the midstream. So tracking from the supplier's perspective that their pieces are getting to the right places at the right time. And um, some of their biggest challenges were that they've been in the logistics business for 75 years, 100 years, something like that. Okay, it's long, long mm -hmm. business. They did the trans Canada pipeline. They did the logistics for that job. Okay, and they went bankrupt with everybody else in the 80s, and now they're, they're boom, it's boom town again, right? And they're really trying to transform the industry, which has been traditionally paper people, hard hats, you know, guys with tally books sitting, uh, logging in trucks that come into the yard to store or, or retrieve pipe. Uh, and they've really gone uh, and built this, this really amazing solution. But here you can see uh, an example of inventory breakdown. So laser players will work on that uh, on that LED screen. But you can see uh, inventory by OD, okay, by outside diameter, inventory by coding type, right? So if the customer wants to know what type of pieces do I have and where are they and how many pieces do I have in inventory across the system. At a high level, and then drill that down. And here you can see uh, average transport per day, barge, rail, and truck from each individual source facility. So, if you've got pieces coming from different facilities, how many days in transit does it typically take? Tracking the effectiveness of the suppliers because they didn't have the transparency, and guys at coding facilities would say, "Oh no, no, it hasn't come in from the mill yet," just because they're backed up and they're not processing the joints time. Right, so they blame the mill, they call the mill and say, no, they left three days ago. And they're like, well, they have no visibility. And the, and the pipeline construction company is on a schedule to get these joints built together. So what do they do? They over order because they don't have, they order more supply than they need to weld because it's just wastage is built into, built into the, uh, the cost and because it's never been trackable. There's just too many people that hand off points throughout the day before it gets into the ditch to get welded together. So they've sort of solved this issue by developing the software, but the customer interface, right, they, they, they're capturing this data all over, right, all over the, the country and, and, and increasingly internationally. And the customer is sitting at the desk saying, you know, you're providing me logistics, right, but this is, you can see how this is differentiated from, we have a bunch of guys, we've been in the logistics business, we know our business, we're a trusted provider, we have the people, we know how to recruit and deploy them and deliver these services talking, talking, talking versus you can watch us do our work. You can track our effectiveness. You can look at the difference between when we manage your inventory and when you just take it as it comes, right? And when your job is done, you know where the leftovers are at, which has never been an answer before. You see this pipe, you've been to a pipe yard, and there's joints of pipe laying all over the place. Nobody knows where those things came from, right? Or you have an explosion, right? You have a pg and &E situation like you did in California, Right, and they pay out thirty million dollars, uh, and the problem is not the thirty million or the, the, or the loss of life terrible, but it's no one knows where other joints like that are also in the infrastructure. What other joints had that same steel, had that same coating, sat out for that long, were welded together that way? Right, where else are they in the system? No one has that information. So this is what I mean about information after the job having value. Right, and think about from a safety, from a compliance, from a regulatory perspective, uh, from just a, a, a history perspective, this information has a lot of value. Here's another look. You can track, uh, you can literally watch uh, a truck or a rail car move uh, on, a, on a map. So we're interfacing through EDI with the rail system, 
uh, were interfaced uh, through GPS with all the trucking providers and um, RFID for all the joints. So if I don't know where is one joint, I can watch it sit still, I can watch it get loaded onto a rail car, I can watch it move, I can watch it get put onto a rack, go onto a truck, go onto the job site. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's very real time uh, in, this, in this scenario. So, a couple of vis visuals. Recapping, uh, this is a this is used, Benjamin Franklin kind of drive the point home here, but investment in knowledge always pays the best interest. This is a, this is actually printed in our lobby. Uh, we, we think that ultimately if any software or systems investment is really an investment in knowledge, about knowing the facts that your business data has to tell you and being empowered by that information. So the takeaways, bottom line is today's clients want more and more and more and more data. They're only going to want more. Like that's, it's not like one day they're going to want less. They're always going to want more information, more transparency, more trackability, more traceability, more accountability from vendors. Uh, increasing transparency into how you deliver to your customers builds trust. Is there some exposure there? Yes, we talked about some examples of that, right? If your data quality is poor, if you make a mistake. But tomorrow's consumer is going to expect this. They're going to expect this transparency. It's not going to be like, sure, it would be nice to know what, how you guys do your business for us versus just bottom line to get done, right? And as you expose this, it builds trust over time as opposed to eroding, right? It says, look, we're going to show you how we do your work for you, and you're going to see it, and if we get behind, you're going to know about it, and we're going to call you before you call us because we'll already know about it because our data is that good. Uh, Paying attention to how the data gets presented, right? It needs to be consumable. Like this overwhelming amount of information that's not useful. And also, information that is so what to the customer, also not super useful. So we're thinking about how do we present the information to the customer that's useful to them, not necessarily useful to us. And lastly is um, from a self-service and, and visually attractive perspective, you know, having that Having your corporate brand flow through to that portal uh, is a key element in attracting users and pulling them in, into that kind of immersive experience. And so that's it.